what is architecture? I think architecture can be almost everything we encounter because what's wonderful about architecture is that it involves in reality and dreams, it involves in static things, it involves in straightforward things, it involves in processes, it involves in imagination, it involves in thinking even about the countryside or natural phenomena if you want it to. So I think that um, in a way this issue of the fundamentals of architecture, I could read it as being a narrowing of the definition. I, I'm afraid I'm somebody who has a very quick threshold of boredom and therefore as soon as something is established I get very bored with it and want to go off in another direction. And um, I think also the fact that so many people want to study architecture, even if there isn't that much work out there, is a fascinating thing and, and in a way I, I can fully understand this because it encompasses so many territories. And I suppose you could also say that architecture is a way of thinking about life or about phenomena. In a way it's uh, a kind of soft discipline that encourages you to think consciously of the significance of phenomena. Not just things, but phenomena, you know, I'm even fascinated by, you know, I, wherever I look there's architecture. If I look at my shoe there's architecture. If I look at your watch there's architecture. If I look at that group of people there's architecture. If I hear, you know, a noise coming from a hill that's architecture. If, and, and you start thinking about what are the implications of it? How does it link with other phenomena? How does it link with other things? That crowd of people isn't just a sort of random crowd. They're sitting in a certain way. They're behaving in a certain way. They're under a certain configuration of trees, blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's, to me, it's a portmanteau term. And uh, so what can architecture do? I think we have only really in history touched upon the minimum of what architecture can do because we, so many of us get nervous of what it might do. You know, maybe it can have an extraordinary effect upon the climate or the environment. Maybe it can have an extraordinarily depressing effect upon somebody's psychology. Maybe it can have a sort of a deadening effect upon people's individualism. In the, these are negatives, but you turn that on its back, it can have amazing opportunities. It can, it can make a space for something that is an ordinary, rather boring activity come alive. You know, there's somebody sitting there maybe, you know, watching bottle tops go on bottles. And the architecture around can, uh, at least make that space better or it can be a boring space where the guy sits with the bottle tops going on the bottles. Uh, it can also I think play a, an interesting game between reality and the imagination. I think that certainly in the 20th century obviously the film did a great deal for people's thinking. You know, it extended people's thinking, it made them dwell upon certain ironies or romances or issues and so on. And I think obviously uh, the electronic phenomenon has had an extraordinary effect upon people's ind independence, not just in political terms but in personal terms. It enables people to have a relationship without the problem of writing a letter or waiting for Friday or you know getting on a boat uh, and architecture I think has uh, sometimes not realized that it too can be almost as fundamental as these things it can absolutely change people's experience and memory you know I was very lucky as a child because I moved my father was an army officer and I moved to many different towns, many, many towns, like 10 or 12 towns. And that meant that I developed a kind of a laboratory of references, probably more than other children had, of all sorts of strange things. I had to, as a child, nonetheless uh, maintain my 
existence uh, in a new place, in a new place, in a new place. And it, it meant that I became very acutely aware of nuance, of something, something. You know, if I wanted to buy ice cream, I didn't know the town, I would instinctively sniff where there might be a place that sold ice cream, you know. If I wanted to, uh, you know, I don't know, go for a, play football or something, I would instinctively have to find, I didn't know in that town where you would. So I think that's a personal reason for my way of thinking. And next question is, uh, how do you position yourself in the discourse of architecture? I position myself as a maverick to some extent, but not as maverick as people like to place me. I think I have the advantage of the English uh, irony tradition and humor tradition and enjoying silly things tradition and also the English Romantic tradition. Uh, I think we are dreamers and we're not so neurotic as some other European. I mean, I think we've, we've I, I find that when I teach in America or other places that, that in the end we are fundamentally European. Our language is more like the Americans, but our thinking is very much more like the Germans or the, or the Belgians or the, you know, because we use irony and strange things and we have a history which, in a, you know, if you, if you come from a historical country, and the Japanese have this as well actually, that you always have all that background. You know, you can go in a room where 300 years ago people cleverer than you were talking about interesting ideas. So you say, yeah, who am I? Yeah, sure. Whereas some more nervous countries are sort of worried to position themselves. You know, like I've been to the Australian pavilion and I built in Australia recently and I like the Australians, but they're very nervous to be taken seriously. We don't have to bother with that. We say, look, you know, we've got thousands of years of whether you like us or not, that's, that's where we are. So you don't have to position. And I think that my position in architecture also is, is, is uh, a product of that in the sense that um, on paper I look like a member of the establishment. You know, I'm a sir and all that and all that and all that. But actually I'm not, I mean, I don't get much money and I don't get much uh, mandate. Yeah. But the, it, 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 it represented the fact that the English acknowledge and somebody who's eccentric to the eccentric to the main system. So that is a, a form, you know, this position. This position as you think of yourself, and this position as the world positions you. And uh, I think that. Um, I'm very suspicious of getting cornered into a position vis-a-vis -vis other people's position. I think then you, you might as well say, yeah, okay, then you stop thinking. You say, I don't have to think, I do whatever we all do in our gang. And that's very boring. And last question, what is your preferred design method? Uh, my preferred design method is scribbling and then quite early on establishing the key uh, direction of the project, very early on, like in the first day or so, saying, right, here's an idea. And I think, I, I, have, I like to have a funny, a funny idea, and I, I kind of get some strange, as a lot of architects do, sort of strange connection of one reason to another to another. Once I have that, it doesn't take me very long to come up with the basic organization. The key thing then, and I'm going to be talking about this tomorrow in the Palazzo Biedman, uh, is what I call tweaking, which I take from the hi-fi industry and the, you know, the, 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 where you have a, you have a, an organisation, and then you you play, and tweak, you tweak it, you you tune it, you tune it, and the best projects that we've done, I think, have been ones where. The project was very quietly 
you know, you have this idea. You say that's what it's going to be, and that's how it's going to organise itself. But then, uh, 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 yeah. tweak it, and I love that. I love this fine tuning. As I say, you get from like the hi-fi industry, where somebody makes an amplifier, and then some guy in a, in a sort of uh, anorak <laughs> plays with it and says, "If we put this." component in which is a little bit different from the other component and then uh, 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 I love that. <laughs>